This show is brought to you by the This Old Nerd store, powered by Amazon.com. Visit store.thisoldnerd.com. Find everything we've talked about and so much more at the store. Plus, since it's powered by Amazon, it's safe and secure. Buy from the This Old Nerd store, you get tech, we get a commission. It's win-win. Welcome back to This Old Nerd. I'm Ayaz Akhtar, and today, first, we're going to thank you guys because you guys are going to the tip jar at the This Old Nerd site, and you're throwing us some money. That really helps us out. Thanks so much. Today, we're going to be talking about front-end software for the Mac. Now, we have our home media server. It's got all our movies, our TV shows, our pictures, our music. All that stuff is in one box. But to access it, we need some kind of front-end. Now, sure, you could use the standard operating system, but that's not really comfortable in the living room. So what we're going to do today is focus on software for Mac. Next episode, we're going to be talking about Windows. Later on, we're talking about set-top boxes. And later on, we're talking about video game systems. Now, even though you might be a Windows guy and you're like, this is stupid, I'm not going to watch this episode, there are some cross-platform stuff here. And Mac users, when the Windows episode comes out, there will also be cross-platform stuff. So watch all the episodes, would you? Let's talk about Front Row. Now, why are we talking about Front Row first? Well, it's built into every Mac nowadays. So if you have a modern Mac and you're running OS X, odds are you have Front Row. Now, this is Front Row. Ours is a bit customized. We'll talk about those plugins in a minute. Let's talk about the stock features. Now, if you go to movies, you'll see that effectively it's using your iTunes library because this is, these are the movies that are in my iTunes library right now. So you're like, well, what if I don't want to have those movies in there? Because my iTunes library does not have all the movies that are on my media server. So what you do is you go to your movies folder. Now, what we've done is we've added in an alias from our video server to our movies folder in this user. But here you see video on server. So we're going to hit that. And now it's accessing our videos on the server. Now I want to watch Bill and Ted's. Now where's Bill and Ted's? It should be here. It's missing. Not really. Here's the thing. These movies up here are DVDs. We scroll all the way down. You're going to see, oh look, it's restarted. Look, we had here, we had walking with dinosaurs and then it moves back to these letters. That's because front row splits up your DVDs and your MP4s or whatever files you have. So we're gonna check out Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. And there's a baby and a lion screaming at the same time. That's, that's a very custom version of this, of this software that we have or we actually have a baby in the room when we're recording. It's very hard to tell. And you can do your normal things. You know, you can scrub around and watch your movies and everything. But how does, how does Front Row handle DVDs? No, not that bad. It actually handles DVDs really well. So let's go to something like a DVD. We're gonna have something like Clerks, which apparently we have on DVD. Front Row automatically figures out you have a DVD, it will play the DVD, and you can access the menus like you normally would. So Front Row handles DVDs pretty well. Now what if you have a very varied movie library like we do? Now, one of the weird things is if when you go to your music collection or you go to the movie section, it looks like it's using iTunes for everything. That's not true. Front Row actually is using QuickTime. Now, if you get a plugin called Parian, Parian will let you open up a lot of different movie types in QuickTime, which means if you install the plugin on Mac OS X, that means Front Row will be able to access the same QuickTime. We also have the iTV plugin. This is from Pi TV and it allows Front Row to access our Elgato iTV recordings. So let's see. I do have episodes of Chuck here. Let's see how this works. Right there, there you go, there's our video. We're tired of watching Chuck. Let's go back to front row. We're gonna hit escape. On your Apple remote, just hit menu and you'll go right back out. So it actually works pretty well for recorded video. Not very good for live television because I've never gotten that to work. While front row is really good at managing your media that are movies, DVDs, and music and that kind of stuff, it's not that great for getting online content. Additionally, when you're trying to navigate, you can't use another keyboard in conjunction with this. You gotta use the Apple remote, or the, if you have a keyboard, you have to use the up, down, left, right keys, enter or escape. If you hit any other key, so let's say I wanted to go find, I wanted to go find V for Vendetta. I don't know if I even have that, but if I hit V on my keyboard, front row closes. Now we're gonna be talking about Plex. Here, we're installing Plex. It's gonna ask you where are your movies located, and you're gonna tell it where your movies are located. And then it's gonna ask you, where are your TV shows? So you go ahead and you set that up. So here's going to our Drobo. Now we're only telling you to look at a limited amount of content. We have over three terabytes of stuff here, but to show you how this works, we're only telling you to look at our maybe like a 20 or 30 gigabyte folder because 
when Plex actually looks at your files, it'll go out on the internet and get metadata about each thing. So if you have a TV show, it's gonna be like, well, this is a TV show and this is how it's organized. It does all that for you. The problem is the larger the amount of files you have, uh, the longer it takes. Now in this case, we're also installing some plugins you need there. We added in some Cena TV, because this can also access web video. So right off the bat versus front row, Plex gives you some stuff that you probably wouldn't have. Now you're gonna have something called the Plex media server running in the background. If you see it running and it's scanning for data, leave it alone. Please don't turn it off. It's gonna take a long time. The larger the library, the longer it takes. So here we go. All right, so Plex is starting up. Right now we have it in a windowed mode so you can see what it looks like. You can have it full screen, so it's that really nice front end kind of thing. It's gonna ask you, hey, do you wanna check for updates? You say, sure. Now we've set up Plex on one of our experimental machines. That's why it looks like it's running a little slow. If you have a really kick-ass machine, it'll do really well. If you have one of our old ones, not so great. So now we're gonna install some plugins. Now where do you go? You go to Plex Online. And we're gonna pick some popular ones. We're gonna install the Hulu plugin because, come on, you want Hulu content. We're gonna go to our video plugins. We just installed a whole bunch of stuff, right? We got CNET TV, Hulu, Revision 3, and TED. We already installed those. Let's take a look if Hulu works. We're gonna pick something off of Hulu. They just added a whole bunch of Erie, Indiana. If you are my age, you might've seen this show on NBC. I think it was up against Parker Lewis or something else. I don't really remember. But anyway, let's, let's watch if this actually works. Now we contacted our friends at Drobo and guess what? They are hooking us up. We're gonna have a deal for you. Here are the details. If you go to drobostore.com and use the code thisoldnerd, all caps, no spaces, you can save $50 off of a Drobo. If you buy a Drobo FS or a Drobo S, you'll save $100. If you buy the Drobo Pro, you'll save $150. Once again, the code is this old nerd. These codes only work in the US. EU codes are coming soon. Now, one of the things about Plex that's kind of irritating is if you're using the Hulu plugin, guess what? You don't have control over, do you want to watch this thing or that thing? Here we have this long Pepsi ad or watch normal commercial breaks. You can't actually change that with your remote. So you're kind of stuck with whatever the default is. Now, finally, we should be watching Erie, Indiana because that's what we were trying to do. Now, here's one of the weird things you should know about Plex. Unfortunately, the latest version of Plex has an issue with the latest version of Flash. So our experimental box has an old version of Flash. If you try to run it with Flash 10.1, you will only get the audio of Hulu, things like The Daily Show, that kind of stuff, which is really lame when you wanna watch video. So what is the suggested workaround? The workaround right now is uninstall Flash 10.1 and move to a lower one. And if you're a nerd like me, you know why you upgraded Flash, because it was a giant security hole in the old version. So if you wanna watch Flash video like Hulu on Plex, you have to basically sacrifice security. So that makes it kind of uncool, a little bit uncool. So Plex, get on that. Otherwise, it's actually a really, really powerful piece of software. Like I told you, it gets the metadata. It runs all your video stuff. You don't have to worry about codecs or anything. It handles everything. Now, Plex isn't the only Xbox Media Center offshoot. There's also Boxy. Now, everyone knows about Boxy by now, right? You know about it? Like, even he knows about it. Now, let's talk a little bit about Boxy. Boxy's really good at online media. Now it's actually also decent at handling your video library. So it can access your media server and it can get a lot more online content. There is one big issue with Boxy when it comes to Hulu integration. Hulu and Boxy have been going back and forth and back and forth. Yeah, it's kind of funny, except you can't get Hulu technically on Boxy, but there is a workaround. Now, before you get started with Boxy, you actually have to set up an account. Why does Boxy make you sign up for an account when none of the other ones do? Well, that's because you can actually see what your friends are doing. So over here, you can hit home, and you can see your friends' activities, your activities, and see what your friends are watching. But I mean, you obviously don't want to see that in the web page. You probably want to see that at Boxy, right? Let's see Boxy. So here's Boxy, and there's my name. You see I'm all signed in, because once you sign in, it'll keep remembering that, and so you don't have to sign in every single time. Let's talk about Boxy as a media server front end first. So we'll go to our TV show section. And what we've done is we've attached it to our server already. So here's our local files, manage sources. You click that. Here you can see video on Bender. Yes, our server is named Bender after Bender, bending Rodriguez of Futurama fame. And you can add sources, you can go to your network. So if you have your media server like we do, 
and it's on another machine, you just tell it where it is. And Boxy will then go ahead and find out information about your video. So here we have like 30 Rock, Thousand Ways to Die, and Idiot Abroad. And it'll put album art and everything right nice and neatly. There's something different about Boxy when compared to every other piece of software we've talked about today. Let's go to 30 Rock. Now we only have one episode of 30 Rock locally. So if we go to this season five, episode three, you can see that it says local file because that means we have it on the server. But Boxy does us a favor. There's other episodes out there online. So what it does is it fills in your season using online resources. So like the latest episode, Gentleman's Intermission, see, it'll run NBC's version of it. All right, so after you suffer through a commercial, can you believe that? Because you want to watch video, you're going to get the NBC version of this file. So here we go. Here's your video. That's a really cool way of handling TV shows. I mean, you have your local files and then it pulls on online resources. That's a really complete picture based on something you don't have to do much work on. So let's take a look at movies though. Boxy doesn't handle DVDs spectacularly well. Uh, sometimes it does not understand that a video TS folder is something that it's supposed to read the entire contents of. It just decides, you know what? I'll just play one of the VOB files. So what happens is instead of watching a full movie, you get to watch like 35 minutes of it, which is not very helpful when your movie's beyond 35 minutes. So when it comes to MP4s and things like this is an MP4 file, this will run fine. Now, one of the other great things about Boxy is pulling in a lot of online content and you can do that through applications. So you go to your apps and you can see here, these are the apps we have installed for our little front page here, but you can go to the app library and see all the stuff there. You can attach Netflix to this. You can set that up. And then let's go back to our applications. We'll go to blip.tv. We'll hit start. And you can see the interface has changed a bit. These are the featured episodes. And let's go see an episode we might know. Hey, look, it's me. If you find a lot of cool videos, maybe when you're at work and you want to watch them later, Boxy has this really cool bookmarklet called Watch Later. So we're going to grab it and we're going to put it right next to Gmail. Now we're going to go to something like Hulu. And let's say we want to watch, okay, this is a good idea. Let's watch Raising Hope. So we're going to click watch later and you're going to see a green bar showed up here, adding to your queue. And now the episode has been added to our boxy queue. So let's go to boxy. And there you can see it, Raising Hope, the sniffles. That's the episode we were watching and we can watch it right there. Now that's one way to get Hulu content on boxy. By the way, keep in mind that boxy also suffers the same fate as Plex. If you get a choice of what kind of ad you want to watch, you're kind of stuck with the default because you can't actually interact with this. The other way to access Hulu content is in the TV shows section. So let's go over here. Let's go into this search. We're going to search for the Simpsons. Now there's the Simpsons. Go ahead, pick that. Now you can see season 22, Treehouse of Horror 21. You can see a fan cast or there are other sources available. You can go to Fox or Hulu and that's another way you can get Hulu on Boxy. What about my partner? How is he or she going to understand what's going on? They better understand what's going on. You're going to do all the work. You're going to go into your system preferences. You're going to go into your accounts and you're going to tell one of these front ends to open up in full screen when the computer starts up. So all they're going to see is that front end. They shouldn't have to go into the mouse and keyboard. They shouldn't have to even press anything. When they turn on the TV and they go to HDMI 2 or HDMI 1 or whatever your Mac is connected to, they should just see the front end and the front ends are all very easy to use. Now, if you have to make choices based on your partner, when it comes to the simplest, easiest one to use, that's front row. Okay, front row is really basic. It's like, here are your five options. That is all you have, the end. Then if you have a slightly nerdier engineer kind of person with you, Plex. A lot of options, a lot of cool things you can do there. If you got like that really social person, like I wanna know what my friends are watching, Boxy. But the thing is Boxy, when you first look at it, looks like what is going on? There's like a hundred things up there. That's why front row for the person who doesn't want to deal with a whole lot, Plex for that engineer, and for your social mindedness, go to Boxy. That pretty much wraps up this episode for front ends on Mac. Next week, we're going to be talking about front ends on Windows. And after that, we got some toys. Anyway, I'm Aya Zaktar for This Old Nerd, reminding you to ask yourself, how's your tech life? Because it could be better.